Okay. Namaste, guys. Let's just all take a moment to fully establish ourselves in the eternal now. Take a few deep breaths. Allow that glorious prana to circulate through our beings collectively. And realize that ourselves and the beloved are one and the same. I'm fucking tired today. Been tired for a while. Just no matter how much I sleep, I just don't have the fucking energy or the enthusiasm to really do anything. And go out for a walk and every step is a kind of physical and psychological torture. Just every moment asking myself why the fuck I'm even bothering doing what I'm doing. And I remind myself that, well, yeah, if you don't do this physical exertion, you'll have issues sleeping. And sleeping is um, a necessary respite from the sheer monotony of day-to-day -day existence something that's cherished, required, absolutely. I'm going through a period of time where I just wish I could just, all I could do is sleep. Just slip into a kind of coma and be done with existence altogether, but that's not realistic. So difficult to even pay attention to a book or music or listening to a podcast or a talk or a lecture or whatever or watching a video which I don't really do much, to be honest. Most of the content that I uh, consume online is all audio, stuff that can be consumed in an auditory way, even if it is a video. so difficult to think of what to do with oneself when one is in such a state. People would recommend that you go and, well, do the things that I've already been doing, exercising, socializing, have a nap, have a shower, go and travel to some new place, engage with a hobby that None of it really um, is having much of an effect in terms of remediating this situation. Nothing that can really be done for it other than just to wait it out for it to um, allow it to subside. It never dissipates completely. In my own uh, biased view, this is the nature of existence is this boredom, this uh, cacophony of banality and uh, lacking, uh, lacking in luster. That's, uh, you know, if you're not being subjected to, to torment and uh, suffering, right? 
that's the uh, when one is free of both joy and uh, pain alike, one finds himself in this just empty, directionless funk, which I guess some people would call um, depression, low-grade depression, anhedonia, avolition, apathy, and uh, yeah, perhaps it is. I mean, in a sense, it very much is. It's just, what do you wanna, what do you wanna name it, right? Some people call it samsara. Some people call it uh, a deep sigh. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, what to do? In the past, when I've been in these uh, situations, you know, I have generally uh, found my way out of it by taking some kind of trip, uh, going someplace for days to weeks to months at a time, and, um, you know, changing the scenery, right? That's what people say, it helps, right? Change your scenery, like a change is as good as a rest or whatever the uh, the saying, the truism is, you know? And always when I was away, I would, you know, there would be this, uh, this conflict would be ongoing. Uh, perhaps it would reach a fever pitch and then at a certain point it would, uh, there would be this moment of, uh, you know, the uh, the clouds would part and a ray of sunlight would strike me in such a way as to, uh, I don't know, like I was uh, Saul on the, the road to Damascus, right? The, the Christos rose up within me, my Kundalini rose, and I was suddenly uh, uh, enlightened in a relative sense, right? And I... Uh, I saw the error of my ways and I saw how I'd been missing this certain piece of the puzzle all along and now I would implement it and I would return back to my uh, normal life, like the, the prodigal son, right? Realizing that the place I was all along was the place that I needed to be, I just couldn't see it because I was blind to it. I was unconscious, I was in a stupor, I was in a trance. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you know, you get back to the place and yeah, you go back into your usual routine and all of a sudden you're just uh, uh, flipping off traffic again and uh, getting like disproportionately angry about the most trivial bullshit. You know, just stupid shit. Someone, uh, you know, hasn't put your juice back in the fridge right and you you think they've they've drunk it you get into this paranoid state that you know someone has had the audacity to to drink your juice when really you know it was just they didn't put it back in the fridge or they'd moved it around and it was hiding behind something right but uh in the meantime before discovering that you just got into this huge fuss and had a huge tantrum or whatever and uh made a fool of yourself uh, I don't know, maybe the best way to deal with that is to just laugh at it, right? To just laugh at oneself. The, how much of a fool one is want to be at all times. Uh, but it's easier said than done. It just feels like there's a lot more at stake more or less all the time than, than would allow one to just laugh, laugh in the face of this absurdity. Because it doesn't seem like absurdity when you're in that state of taking it all very seriously. So yeah, 
these traveling excursions or whatever, being in such a state as I am now that's oftentimes preceded one of these excursions, I'm in half a mind to do one again, but you know, the older I get, the more disillusioned I become, and um, uh, it just seems like such a huge amount of effort to just sort of pry myself away from my uh, my routines, and even though my routines are making me utterly miserable and um, dead inside, um, it's, you know, just one gets comfortable in their, in their misery. And um, I guess knows too well that, you know, even if one is able to pry themselves out of their misery, it's, it's temporary. One is just gonna ultimately return to the misery anyway, so one may as well just stay mired, rotting within it. It's a very cynical way of viewing things, and um, it's certainly partially true, but I don't know. It's kind of like, why bother getting up when ultimately one has to just get back down again? Even though getting up will make one feel temporarily better. It's just this... Um, Being sick with the whole cycle of it, the, cyc the cyclical nature of one's uh, emotions, one's um, internal experience of life, that everything comes back around, everything is in flux all the time. The seasons, one's emotions, the day and the night, everything is ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing living, dying, growing, decaying, it's just, ugh, it's so exhausting. And yeah, we should laugh at it, right? Laugh maniacally at it. As we know, there's absolutely fucking nothing that can be done about it. Perhaps. Perhaps this is pure speculation, but insofar I haven't seen what can be done about it other than just um, just not being so tied up with it, not taking it all so fucking seriously. It's like, yeah, you know you're gonna you're gonna suffer. everyone around you is going to suffer the things that you cherish and try to maintain are all gonna disintegrate and um, wither away no matter how hard you try to prevent it, fighting a losing battle. Life is fighting against death, but death is also fighting against life. It's um, every, uh, every, uh, Every night has a, a day that uh, precedes it, even though every day has a night that precedes it. What to do, you know? What to do but laugh, you know? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't fucking grip, grip too tightly. I guess. I guess. That's what seems to be consistently coming to me now as I think about this, uh... The plight of being of being sentient.
Yeah, okay, that's all I have to say for now, I think. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, and um, goodbye.